Okay, recording. So Power Cube design session with Tom, myself, Marchin, and Jean Baptiste in Chile. We're go working on a Power Cube version 15.6. So now we're we're shifting because there's so many different prototypes of the Power Cube right now, and you can look at the main Power Cube page on the wiki, which is simply open source ecology org slash wiki power cube you can see the genealogy and you see we've, we've been through a number of prototypes uh, the number is about 10 or 15 or so it's versions on the power cube page but you see uh, we've got the version 15.6 since, since we're kind of losing track of the numbers we're doing a more sensible nomenclature for that and 15.6 refers to 15 the year and 6 the month so that is our frozen release for the workshop for July, we're going to build six of these power cubes, and um, with our team here. So myself, Tom is our our power cube lead. Jean has been doing all our graphics. Um, so on a power cube, look at page the page on the wiki power cube version 15.6. You can see the graph. The CAD is downloadable through Google Warehouse. So actually, if you click on the Google Warehouse, you can download the file, including SDLs for 3D printing, actually. But the page has a development template on it, basically where we keep track of all the different products that need to be developed and the state of completion so that the you can have the total done percentage off the development spreadsheet for generating burndown graphs. But basically, we're, right now, we're working on the instructional, which is embedded into the page. So it's a Google Doc. And regarding the the applications of the power cube, for us, we're we're doing some radical work on scaling. So scaling is a big, big, big thing for us. You can see that we're not inventing anything new. This is from Caterpillar, uh, but basically people have been doing stacked power units on bulldozers, and this is a bulldozer case. Sidewise uh, stacking of power cubes, so think about our power cubes stacked like this, but more than that, 2 to 4 to 8 to 6 to 8. Or you can train two vehicle pieces, like a train for a more powerful bulldozer. That's the idea of how we intend to scale things. So for applications such as digging ponds and regenerating the, the earth, I just actually posted on Facebook um, the concept of a pond storage on our site, where if you look at this, this is just posted... Today, this is the June 13th at at about 3 p.m. This posting shows, that's factory farm there in the yellow boundary, but Lake 1 and Lake 2 are the proposed lakes or ponds that we're going to build. They're quarter acre lakes or ponds. We're, we're considering gravity storage, so between them, which on paper it looks like 24 kilowatt hours of storage, which is actually amazing. Uh, that could take us off grid if we wanted to. But the concept is with a bulldozer, there's a lot of um, a lot of earth moving work to to build a pond or to trench out a trench to to run the water line between the two if you want to do something like a gravity storage system. So that's something we're considering uh, as a possibility for a future workshop. We'll we'll evaluate that completely. But in the meantime, we're on the power cube modules. Uh, we broke down the power cube into into a workflow. We're trying to design. If we have six, we're currently designing for six work teams during the workshop. So if you look at, that's a basic schematic of our workshop, all the light green are the welding stations and workstations. So there's assembly cutting, there's CNC cutting table, hydraulics assembly, small parts welding, uh, more assembly. Um, that's what it's going to look like. So we're designing for six parallel teams to build six power cubes, a team of four people each. So we're planning on about 24 people at the workshop. Now. We've broken down a number of of modules to be specific, or, or basically more more by the function. So, so the six different workstations would be there's cutting uh, with CNC. So we're looking at having the CNC cutter. There's cutting by abrasive saw. There's welding with our welders. Iron worker station for punching and shearing. There's a hydraulic station for assembly of of hydraulics. And then there's a tank welding station, or cutting and welding. The tanks are actually going to be the main challenge of the entire event because that requires um, gas-tight ability to weld, which requires technique. And that's not an entry-level job. 
uh, two skilled people will have to do that during the workshop. There's also going to be a grinder station where we grind out a few parts that we need to. Uh, drilling and mag drilling station for some of the, the holes that can be done using the hole puncher. Such as when it's in, a, in an angle where you can't get the, the hole puncher bit in there or when it's in a tank where you can't get, you have to have a, you can only do holes with the hole puncher on flats, not on tubes or anything like that. So there's going to be a welding station, safety, etc. And right now the, there's one jig that we, uh, that Tom actually came up with for, for how do you do an effective, um, the, basically the pump mounting to the engine is the most precise part of the entire process. If you look at the, the power cube itself, uh, basically, so you've got the, the engine, <coughs> engine unit, uh, let's see, th this is looking at this off Google Warehouse. Uh, let's see. Basically, the, the most complicated part of the, like the assembly process, you can say, is mounting the pump on the engine. That requires a precise distance between the pump and the engine. Precise distance and perfect parallel ordering. Um, perfect parallel and perfect distance for the pump from the, the engine so that when we build it we can work on the module basically the engine slash the engine module is going to be put together as one unit the pump module is going to be put together as another unit um, and basically the Google warehouse which you see there is outlined by all the different modules that exist so you can examine that there's the frame, hydraulic reservoir, the fuel tank, the engine, the hydraulics, uh, the oil cooler. I'm trying to zoom into there. Uh, the hydraulic pump. There's the electrical section. It's a little hard to navigate here on demand. But yeah, pressure plumbing. There are controls, uh, control parts, uh, hoses. And everything else. So it's, it's a bunch of different parts, but it's nicely lined out into into clumps, where we're going to go through those bunches of items as modules, so that the whole process is facilitated. Right now, we're going through the specific directions for how to um, now continue with the the build. So we're going to the to the power cube document. Let's see. So on the preparation of the jig, Tom, you've got the the basic spacers for mounting the pump. So basically the detailed procedure is we're going to first cut the angles. We're going to then measure them that they're pretty much, let's see, explain Tom what you're doing in, um, in slide number, let's see, preparations, S slide five, spacer okay, plate. On the, on the preparations, uh, what we're going to do is, is cut two uh, angle iron pieces. And these two angle iron pieces are to be used as spacers as to space the pump uh, mounting bracket, the two plates in the mounting bracket, so that they'll be as, as parallel as we can get, get the two surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, and so to do this, first of all, we take a, just a piece of angle iron and we cut off a piece about four and one eighth inch long and then clamp that onto a longer piece with the, uh, the, 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 law, the far ends parallel. You know, we can just use a square or a flat piece of metal, whatever, to, plant, to, to position them so that they're, the ends are flush with one another. And then uh, clamp the two pieces together very securely using some C-clamp or other heavy-duty clamps. Yeah. And then put that back in the bandsaw and then cut the other end of it. But, but when, when you cut it, you cut both pieces of it just just uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch off of the end of the the one that's already cut mm -hmm. and then cut all the way through the other piece so mm -hmm. the result is what we'll end up with the two pieces cut exactly the end with both pieces flush okay so that that should be two pieces the same size mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, then, and once we get that um, the the band saw it's it's gonna have teeth on it so it cuts it usually with a a uh, little bit of a rough surface. You run your finger fingernail over it, and you can feel the ridges in there where the teeth were cutting through the metal. Yeah. So uh, for, for 
a more precise alignment of the plates, we'd like to get this polished a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So uh, then in the second drawing, you can see down at the bottom, uh, you want me to sh do a screen share so I can show this? You could do that, yeah, go ahead. Um, desktop, start screen share. Okay, so this is the first piece right here that I was uh, indicating. So yep. we, we clamp, uh, th this would have been one solid long piece, and then we cut four and one eighth inches off of it and put it on top of the, this piece and clamped it securely, made sure the, the ends of it were flush over here, and then took the bandsaw and cut again. So then we'd end up with two pieces the same length, and that, that should be about, let's say, four and one sixteenth inches. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the actual length of it is in, is not doesn't have to be really that precise, but what we do have to do is get the cuts of each end. We have to have it very perpendicular to the length of the angle iron. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's what we're shooting at now. So the next thing we do is, is uh, you, you can see on the second piece over here, I reverse oriented the, uh, the two pieces so they make it kind of a T-shape. Yep. And then, uh, and then reclamp it together. And this, this is really easy to clamp together because you can just lay both of those back to back mm -hmm. on a piece of uh, flat steel. Yep. And square up the edges and clamp it together. Yep. And then, and then from there, we take it and, and just slowly uh, find a nice uh, flat piece of concrete and, and just uh, rotate it in a circular motion. And uh, I found it best to hold it by the very lower edges of the angle iron itself so it doesn't rock from side to side so that we keep that uh, surface flush on the concrete and just slowly uh, rotate it both clockwise and counterclockwise and, and back again back and forth like that and, uh, and but how do you check it's I mean how do you check I mean I'm having trouble with seeing how do you put like a square on the other side of it so you know it's perpendicular to the concrete block I mean, it should be, but the point is that it's not, and we're trying to get it to that final. So you find that in practice it works pretty well, and you can measure that it's up. You mentioned that it's down to one thousandth of an inch after you do this grinding step for what, like five, ten minutes? Yeah, ten minutes. Yeah, about, about ten minutes. And, wow. And, and we also flip it one end to the other end. And then if you look on the next slide down, uh -huh. you see I, I started using three different calipers, and so we measure it at each of these three points and, and the like I, like I was saying a while ago the the actual final length of it isn't that as important right is that each of these points each of these measurements will be within one thousandth of one another yep because what, what this means is that we'll have a very very flat surface yep and uh and so then we have to have both of these two pieces they, they need to be exactly the same length as one another as well mm-hmm yeah Okay, well, that explains it. I mean, you, you've done it, you've succeeded at this, and we're going to see ourselves in the workshop how with uh, rubbing a piece of metal on a piece of concrete, we're going to get it down to one thousandth of an inch accuracy in length. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's a, an old, old technique they used to use in grinding telescope lenses. Mm. Uh, and, uh, of course, that, that kind of grinding has to be very precise. Okay. Um, and so when, when we're finally done with these, uh, these two pieces will be used to put in between the pump, um, uh, the, the plate that the pump mount, mounts on and the, uh, the other plate that, that suspends the pump off the top of the tanks. Yeah. And so, uh, so those are the two plates that are, that are important that they be parallel because then we mount a third plate on top of that that's the engine plate. And, and uh, yep. so the, the end result is, is that we want the shaft of the hydraulic pump to be at exactly in alignment with the engine shaft. Yep. And so there, 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 when we get to welding the, uh, the, the spacers onto the pump mounting bracket, there are a few uh, techniques about that so we can weld it so we can make sure that the spacers stay aligned also. Uh, what is that, what is the essence of that technique? Clamp tight and 
course, do um, like gradual welding. Actually, no, we don't. We don't really clamp it tight to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. What we do is the, you you start with just one piece. Um, say say the the longer piece, and and uh, and then we position the angle uh, iron pieces on that, and. And so we, what we're going to do is we're going to have four pieces of angle iron. Now the spacers that, that we just created, uh, like I said, they're going to be about four and one sixteen inch, inches long. Well, well the actual uh, other pieces are going to get welded to the pump mounting bracket. They're going to be slightly shorter than this. And so we're going to have oh, a little bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the these are just the spacers. That's the point. These are just the spacers. We don't use these. To w wait, do we use these to weld or no? These are just our jigs. No, these are just just jigs, and we can reuse okay. them from one bracket to the next to the next. Right. So we generate one of these jigs. We can use it multiple times, but the point is, when we cut the other ones, the other ones don't have to be exactly same length because you fill it in with the welding, right? Right. And they, they don't have to be terribly exact. They, they oh. just have to be. Uh, yeah, there there you, you got the. Uh, there. Very nice. So, so you can essentially cut just with a cutoff saw or a, an abrasive metal saw, and because you have the precise spacers, these can now be welded just like they are. Right. Very nice. And so, uh, the way the way we would do it is, first of all, you see how the uh, angle iron pieces are on the left and right on the drawing right there. Yeah. Um, and then those two pieces, uh, when we go to weld that, I would go on the inside of the hole here and, and weld the very corner, uh, weld that down to the plate so that when it when the weld bead, when it cools, it'll, it'll draw the, um, you know, it, it tends to shrink just a little bit. And so when it cools, it, it will secure the entire um, angle iron piece to the to the plate without yeah. tipping it to one side or the other. If, if we want it on the outside anywhere, it would, it would tip it in one direction or another. Oh, because it all oh, very nice because it has the the feet of it that are next to the metal already, so it can't bond down, bind down. Right. Very nice. Okay, that's very important. Okay. Uh, so that basically that's a tack weld on the inside, uh -huh. and then we get all those tack welded, and then go back and put a nice bead all the way around. Very nice. And, uh, just, just to make it uh, super strong, I put a weld on the inside and on the outside. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Um. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, uh, we would uh, weld it both. The way I would start out is, is by, by welding those, first of all, to that 6x6 six six, uh, plate that has the hole in it, and then, and then invert that with the spacers and then weld it to the, to the longer plate. Um, and then, uh, because we have a little bit of a, you know, the shrinkage of some of the weld pieces, uh, it, it usually takes a crowbar or something to, to get the spacers out of there. Uh -huh. the okay. So can you draw when you do the the detail there? Draw in the clamps and the draw bar and a pry bar, things okay. like that. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Uh, where are the files for these uh, these explainer explainer pictures here? Is that within the original file or that's a separate file you're using? Um, yeah, the the file for what now? Uh, when you have the your your jig pictures that you screen copied is that the same file as the source file for the CAD? Oh no, I just drew those up just for this presentation. Okay. I, I did it just, uh, just a little while ago. Okay. Uh, can you upload that source as well? That that would be useful too. Uh, Wherever okay. you can. You want, you want the warehouse or to yeah, the, warehouse uh, would be. Warehouse is good. Just uh, so we have to modify it or make changes on these then we can just download them again or modify them okay. so we don't rely on you to do that yeah yeah we want to use the definitely use the clamps just little library right. parts that I mean those are good clamps we'll take them
<laughs> okay. Yeah, these, uh, like the seat clamps and that kind of thing, I, I, uh, I just found those on the warehouse. Yeah, that's great. Around. Yeah, okay, excellent. Looks, looks like it's all coming together. Good, good explanations there. So let's work on maybe, um, let's continue on detailing the, the workstations like we started yesterday though. Yeah, so I think we're in good shape on, that's a good tutorial on the, the jigs, which pretty much if you can understand how to weld the pump on straight, um, that's the main thing. The only other non-entry level task is then welding the tanks. But other yeah, than that, it's also, all just bolting things together. Also, on the next slide down, I have the uh, the jig also for the shaft yep. coupling plug. Yep. yep. And uh, so that one, I just started on that. I was typing it up while we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and this one is uh, is for aligning the the two shaft coupling. Yep. Now, now this time the engine shaft, uh, the, the coupling for it is is a four inch long piece, and I think that one we can still cut that in half. And that should be plenty strong enough on the engine side. But but now with the five eighths inch shaft, um, the the shaft on the pump itself is one and a quarter inches long, and then the the coupling that we get for that it's also one and a quarter inches long. So we can just use it one piece. Okay. Uh, and That's so good. we need to make a, a plug for this um, to to match that to to align the two halves for welding. Because this is this is a similar kind of an issue. In order to maintain the shaft alignment, we got to get these welded exactly right. Exactly. Yep. Mhm. Mm so uh, in doing that, the wet, the the plug, uh, uh, I'm going to have the plug made to where it will maintain uh, alignment using the inner surfaces of the shaft couplings. And then uh, the plug is going to be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter than both of the couplings together, so that when we uh, assemble that, we, we put the the plug inside the one half and then put the other half together, and and then we clamp it all together with a C clamp. That the C clamp will will clamp against the coupling halves and not against the plug. Right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then we just basically. Uh, Weld it, but but now just for an extra little tidbit, um, in order to aid with the alignment, the two surfaces of the uh, coupling halves that we put together, uh, I, I have been using the surfaces that were machined when the shaft coupling was made, so it was the outer surfaces, and and not the ones that I cut with a bandsaw, because the bandsaw tends to have just a slight irregularity, and so uh, that that using those machine surfaces from the manufacturer will help align the yeah. uh, couplings better. Right. Right. Good point. Excellent. Should we get into the uh, detailing further the, the workstations then? Okay. Let's go. What slide is that? Slide 9? Yep. So slide starting slide 10. Okay, let's do that. So that there's a lot of detail here. I think I'm going to cut off the video right now. That's a good intro to where we are on this good overview of where we are. And actually, we recommend that the people who are going to participate in the workshop just go through this if they want to get a deeper understanding of what's going on in the actual build. Okay, with that said, I'll cut this off here and then we'll continue. Excellent.